Good day, fellow investors. The stock market is a little bit shaky lately, and many of you ask whether dividends are the way to go today. And even in the poll we made, most requests were for dividends. I'll also make Europe, and I'll also discuss real estate. That was highly requested. So for that, I thank you very much. And of course, make sure to dividend up that like button to support the channel and that it pays dividends for this channel forever. Thank you very much. Let's talk about dividends. Now, as the growth hope has deflated a little bit, the old tech changing the world is a little bit subdued, many of you think, okay, dividends are the reality in the investing world. We should now look for safety for value for dividends. And let me show you why you are completely right. Dividends are the way to go now but also in general. So that's investing. Dividends are the result of investing. And yes, we'll also discuss Berkshire doesn't pay dividends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me show you something here, the importance of dividends over time. This is a great article by Professor McQuarrie from the Santa Clara University showing stock market charts that you never saw. So very clear, an initial 10,000 investment in the stock market in 1927 is now 9.3 million of nominal wealth. This was in 2008, so now even higher. And this is the chart we all know, stocks only go up, nothing can go wrong there. Sven, you're an idiot because you say that index funds are not that great, blah, 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 blah. But let's look at this. During the 1852 to 1932 period, inflation was intermittent. So deflation, everything was there, stagflation. Dividends accounted for almost all the total return. And this is a chart that nobody is showing you how for 70 years stock went nowhere, nowhere. So anything can happen next. But let's dig deeper. If we adjust the returns, the chart we have seen with inflation and deduct the dividends, the 10,000 that went to 9 million just make 33,000 in real final wealth. And this is a chart, again, that nobody shows you. So yes, stocks go up, up and up, but in real wealth and deducting dividends, you see that there are big, big dry spells and nothing. So this is again, 50 years of nothing, and then a little bit up down to 2009. Now we are up again, but it's very likely that from this up here, we'll again have a lot of years of nothing. So if we account for this inflation and dividends, the truth is that since 1928, dividends plus inflation accounted for 99.7 of the nominal wealth produced as of 2008 by investing in stocks. So yes, dividends and inflation, that's why dividends matter. So when you think about it, yes, it is all about dividends. Let's dig deeper. And then of course, I make a valuation of the S&P 500, then I get comments when I cannot understand your valuation on dividends. Uh, now the world is different and you should value on earnings, buybacks, this and that. Why don't I stick to dividends to give you the real value? Be conservative, if you're right, good. But be careful if somewhere in the next 20 years, I end up right. And I did that here in this video. I will put the link in the description below for those that missed it. And now there is the second argument. Yes, but Berkshire doesn't pay dividends. So you are totally wrong. Am I? Berkshire portfolio, dividend company, dividend with buybacks that push up dividend per share, dividend, dividend, dividend. If we go deeper, Berkshire takeover for Burlington Northern Santa Fe, 32 billion paid in the first year immediately. What is this? Dividends and look at the payouts from Burlington over the last years. Now it's already a 15% dividend yield on what Berkshire paid and that's investing and sooner or later it has to come to dividends. As Berkshire grows in the next 10-20 years, maybe again it will start paying dividends if there is no other. But for now they have investments. But keep in mind Berkshire is about Warren Buffett reinvesting those dividends for you. So again, yes, it is about dividends. If we go to Coca-Cola, look at how much he paid for it 1.3 billion and he's now getting 700 million per year in 
a dividend. Yes, dividends. That's why he is investing, holding it, and reinvesting these dividends for Berkshire's wealth. So even with Buffett, it's all about dividends. But yes, dividends are just part of the shareholder reward. If we look at how the structure of shareholder rewards works, we have earnings, and then those earnings are redistributed depending on how the company decides. They can pay dividends, buybacks, or they can be reinvesting into new businesses and grow businesses, merger acquisitions, and whatever. However, whatever they do here, the point of it is to increase the dividend per share. If they do buybacks, less shares, thus the dividends go up. If they invest, future potential dividends go up. This is Berkshire, they always invest, but that's just Warren Buffett doing the job for you. And the conclusion is that 99.7% of returns long term as the valuations, as the interest rates, as all the noise evens out over the long term, it is about inflation and dividends. And those dividends grow and make your wealth over time. That's how it is. Now you can be smarter and buy more when it looks ugly and sell or rebalance or change when it looks good. But over time, it is about the business and the dividends and the growth that it allows you to reinvest, like Warren did with Coca-Cola American Express and is now doing with Apple also. So sooner or later, it is about those dividends and dividends are a function of earnings. So yes, earnings lead to dividends. So you can focus on earnings, but it's easier to focus on dividends because those are the real thing there. This is redistributed, but I focus on earnings, but at the end, it should all lead into something tangible for you too as an investor. Because of course, if there are no earnings, there will be no dividends. And now let's look a little bit at the Investing options, the normal funds, I don't know what these funds do that have 7%. This is something strange likely. And if we look at the normal options, the dividend yields in the environment aren't that stellar. So 1%, 2%, maybe 3%. So dividend aristocrats, nothing to, let's say, really, really great. But I've looked at a few companies and uh, we have all analyzed these companies here on the channel. I think this will come tomorrow. So if we look at the companies, this is already something. This is already an average of five, four, five percent. So one can, let's say, build a dividend portfolio. However, keep in mind all of these, some are cyclical, some are older businesses, some are this, some are that. So it, this is investing, but at least you get something. And if you're happy with a 3% dividend and you find 20 businesses that give you 3 4%, it's very unlikely that you will be hit hard and uh, the dividend yield will allow you to reinvest, compound the wealth and do really well over time. Of course, if you can find higher dividends better, even better. Plus, if you can find good dividends that have two buybacks and have reinvesting into the business at a high return on investment, then you are really looking for the jackpot. That's always what we look for. Or low earnings that will allow for future increases in dividends per share, etc., etc. So that's deeper second level investing. But let me tell you something now that will freeze your mind because it's boring, because it's this, but it's the core of investing. Dividends, inflation, is what makes your return over decades. Buybacks, yes, now it works, this and that, great. But over decades, and here your mind shuts off decades, Sven, I don't know what will I eat tonight, don't talk to me about decades. But unfortunately, investing is about decades. And when you allow the power of dividends and etc etc even if there is no dividend now the potential of it coming in the future that's investing and if i go to my table of outlook for the next 20 years so investing into businesses is best reinvesting dividends also for compounding and of course lower stock prices are better for reinvesting those dividends so this summarizes a little bit but i would say don't focus on dividends like okay i need a dividend look at the six seven percent focus always on investing in businesses and think okay where will the dividend be in 10 years 
or if there is no dividend, will the return on investment still be there for growth? I also own businesses that pay no dividends. I own some that pay dividends and that allow me to reinvest those dividends over time and compound my wealth. That is investing. And if you have a perspective of 10, 20, 30 years, everything becomes easier. That's the key of investing. That's the key of dividends. And also eliminating everything else eliminates the spec speculation, the hanky-panky that we have seen going on over the last 10 years, but investing is about more than the last 10 years, and that's why you're watching this channel. If you are looking for the next 10x stock, you already stopped watching at the second minute of this video. So, thanks for watching, dividend that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.